welcome back to my channel, or if this is your first time here, hi, my name is Dana. I upload a new video every single Sunday, and whenever I have time, I like to add in an extra or two during the week, so now is a great time to subscribe if you haven't already to stay on top of all of my new videos. Usually I make tea related content, but I've been doing some coffee ones because we're all making our coffee at home right now and I personally used to work at Starbucks, so I feel like I kind of have a good handle on how we can recreate the drinks that we love the most from the comfort of our own homes. In like any of my like Starbucks drink copycat recipes, I'm not gonna use just like Starbucks syrups because that would be too easy and that's not something that average person has on hand. While we're not like traveling out to stores and things, we're just gonna use what we have in our house. So for today, I'm going to make a favorite of a lot of people, the Starbucks mocha. So the first thing you need obviously is some coffee. If you have the means to make espresso, that is ideal, but if not, you just wanna make as strong and concentrated bit of coffee as you can, whether it's in a French press, if you have a Keurig machine, it doesn't really matter as long as you are able to get it as concentrated as you can, because right now we're just making do with what we have. So if it's not exact, that's all right, but we're gonna get you as close as possible. So for me, I use this like stove top Italian mocha pot coffee maker. So I have my coffee right in here and we only need a really tiny bit. So I have this little shot glass and I'm going to fill almost to the top with our coffee and this is all you really need. So when you go to a Starbucks and you order like a latte or a mocha, it actually has very little caffeine in it. And another fun fact is a regular cup of coffee has a lot more caffeine than espresso shots do because what affects the caffeine content is how long the coffee grounds interacted with the water. And when you make espresso, hot water is just forced really quickly through that really finely ground coffee and that's why you get such a strong flavor but in reality you're not getting as much caffeine as you would get from a regular cup of coffee that is like the the water's hanging out in there and slowly dripping through and the most caffeine you could get would be a cold brew because cold brew coffees are brewed overnight in cold water so the coffee grounds have like 20 hours to interact with the water and really get all the caffeine out of it. So that's a long-winded way to say that all you need is a little bit of very concentrated coffee. We're going to need some kind of milk. In our house we never really buy dairy milk. We only have almond milk or like usually some alternative so I'm gonna be using almond milk and we're gonna want some whipped cream to top it off at the end so I have that next we're going to need things to make mocha sauce at Starbucks the mocha sauce comes in like this big bag it comes as a powder and every day we combine it with water and we whisk it up and it smells amazing it smells like you're baking brownies we're going to need some water to make our sauce and I have our cup and we're gonna need sugar I just have this regular like white sugar whatever you have in your house is good if you use like sweet and low or stevia that will definitely work and then cocoa powder i have hershey's special dark cocoa powder which is my favorite is it weird to have a favorite cocoa powder but if you've tried this you know the difference it is so chocolatey and amazing and a mocha is essentially a chocolate latte if you have like chocolate syrup or chocolate sauce in your house you could always use that instead of like creating a sauce so they use more sugar than chocolate but since we're at home we are making our own rules and we can do it however we want i'm not going to do any exact kind of measurements I'm just sort of gonna eyeball it, but I'm gonna start off with like a good, generous, like spoonful of sugar, like that. And you know what? I, I'd probably say that this will end up being, I mean, obviously cheaper than Starbucks, but probably less um, unhealthy as well. So I'm gonna do like that. There's our sugar. Now I'm gonna do our cocoa powder. I'm gonna do like another big spoonful like that and I want this really chocolatey so I'm gonna do like a little bit extra I don't have a whisk like small enough for this I'm gonna stir this up with a fork and just combine that sugar and cocoa powder you know what this looks a little less 
sugary than it looks at Starbucks. So I, I'm gonna add even more, which this seems crazy, but those drinks are really sweet. And even if I added like all the sugar I have in that little bowl, it probably would not turn out as sweet as the real thing. So here we have our powdered mocha sauce in the bottom of our cup. Now I'm gonna add water. Um, I have just warm water, just cause it'll combine better and we're making a hot drink. I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time until I get the consistency I'm looking for. I don't want it to quite be like a paste, like as thick as like a paste, but I don't want it to be like watery either. I'm kind of looking for like the texture of like wet paint, I guess. So right now, this is a little bit thick still. So here's how it looks so far. It's like, it's a little bit runny, but not quite as much as I'd like. So I'm just gonna add like the teeniest bit more. And that, that should be good. And then I'll mix it up like this. I'm gonna put my spoon in there too, so I can like, really get up on the sides and so we really just want to beat out any clumps all right so once it's pretty good it should be like like that like it's like a little bit runny but not too much so like there's still some texture to it but it's definitely like a liquid kind of like a hack that i like to do is to sort of like get it all around the sides of the cup. You really want this to combine with the milk and with the coffee. So I like to just sort of spread it out. All right, let's, let's taste it, right? I mean, might as well. <laughs> Hershey's Special Dark Cocoa Powder. In my opinion, makes this like way better than Starbucks. So we have it all mixed around and we wanna go ahead and heat our milk. We don't want too much foam on top, but we do want it to be hot. I frothed mine up in my Nespresso frother, but if you don't have a frother, you could just heat your milk carefully on the stove top and you should get a little layer of froth on top either way. You could even just heat your milk up in the microwave. But we want our milk warmed, but first we're going to add in our little shot of espresso or coffee or whatever we happen to have. So I'm gonna pour that right in, and we could give it another little mix. Okay, so now we have about to there with our coffee and chocolate mixture. Now we're going to put in our milk. And once I get to about here, I'm gonna give it like an extra mix. just so it like, it's all combined really nice. We have the luxury of making this at home, so we want to come up with the best mocha we can. I'll top it off with like the last little bit of milk. So here's our mocha, and the final touch is the whipped cream. If you want your whipped cream to look really pretty, like they do at Starbucks, we're gonna be generous with it. We're gonna put like way too much. <laughs> Especially because we don't have a lid on our cup. We're gonna take full advantage of making this at home. Start in the middle. We're gonna swirl our way out. And then swirl back in. <laughs> Ta-da! We have our very own Starbucks-esque mocha to enjoy without even leaving our house. <laughs> now, obviously the most important thing is how does it taste? So let's go ahead and try it. <laughs> it is so good and chocolatey. And honestly, it is way less sweet. Even like all that sugar I added, I felt like I was like going crazy adding way too much sugar. That's how it looked to me. <laughs> like I was like, this is a bit much. But honestly, this is nowhere near as sweet as a Starbucks mocha. In a tall size mocha, they put one shot of espresso and three pumps of mocha sauce. And they're like, they're like good big pumps too. And then in a grande, they do two shots and four pumps of mocha. 
And in a venti size, this is where it gets interesting to me because they still only do two shots of espresso, but obviously it's bigger in size, so more milk, and also five pumps of mocha. So when you get a venti size, you're not actually getting more caffeine unless you get it iced because the iced is a, li a little bit, even a little bit bigger. So if you get an iced venti, you are getting three espresso shots. But as far as hot drinks, you're not getting any more caffeine by ordering a venti than if you order a grande. I really think of mocha as like grown up hot chocolate. It's literally like hot chocolate, but with coffee. <laughs> if you wanted to, and you didn't want to mix up like the cocoa powder and the um, sugar, you could just use hot chocolate mix. And I bet it would be really good because it's already like perfect amount of sweetness. And then just add your coffee and repeat the steps from there. But like, since we're all at home, we really shouldn't be going through Starbucks drive throughs So the more we can do at home, the better because honestly it's cheaper and less unhealthy as well. Let me know if you guys try making this, if you try like recreating any Starbucks drinks at home, let me know what you think. If you end up posting on Instagram, please tag me because I want to see what you guys come up with. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed learning to make a Starbucks copycat mocha. This is really good. I'm going to have to give some to my husband and see what he thinks because he's working from home as well. But anyway, I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy and I hope you're having a beautiful day and I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching!